Hi there, I'm Rebecca and a really warm welcome back to my channel, Created by Rebecca. Now, a little while ago, something exciting caught my attention in our village magazine. And it's the fact that we are having a Jubilee picnic, which is exciting all on its own. But also, we are having a crown making competition. Now, I discovered my competitive side probably about... 12 years ago when I first started entering vegetable competitions there'll be no cardboard there'll be no tin foil I am going all out on this one <laughs> let's get started we start with this really simple wire frame I've used some flat section aluminium wire and then I've also used some much thinner wire to bridge the gaps and then also wire on these pendant drops in antique bronze. They'll get painted later but we'll get to that bit. And you'll notice as we go round the crown that the pendant drops are set lower and lower and lower until we get to the back and then they start to come back up again. I made a paper template and marked out the positions of each of those pendants so that they will form the peaks of the crown. And then I designed the other elements that I'm going to be adding on. I've put some Sculpey Primo Ecru coloured clay, could be any colour because we're going to paint the whole thing through my pasta machine so that it's nice and conditioned, nice and flexible and is in a really lovely th even sheet. I've used the thickest setting on my pasta machine. I say pasta machine, you must only use it for polymer clay if you have bought it to use with polymer clay. Do not mix food and polymer clay together. So I'm just pinching the sheets of clay onto the frame, making sure they're really pressed on well, using that wire structure within to act as a kind of key for the clay. And then I'm wrapping it up around the bottom and back up on the inside of the crown pinching, pinching, pinching around all that wire structure. The crown's had its first bake here and that's why I've got a heat proof glove on. And I'm now adding some extra clay. I'm going to use Sculpey Bacon Bond to help it all adhere. And I'm applying that to the baked clay, spreading it out, and then applying some more raw clay on top. The bacon bond will really help adhere the raw clay to the pre-baked clay. And you can see it's so easy, I can just tear pieces of the clay off to make it roughly the right shape and size and then I can just smooth it all together even the raw clay onto the baked clay I'm building up some clay around the peaks and that's to help hold them firm now I'm using a tool to make a kind of hammered effect to the inside of the crown. That means I haven't got to worry about it being perfectly smooth. So here's the basic shape of my crown. All the peaks are much more solid. Now they have the support of the polymer clay. So we go back to the pattern that I made. You can see I've got this scallop design. 
Uh, I went ahead and made a cutout paper template for that. On top of which I built this polymer clay version so as a flat back. You can see I've added some little beads of clay here to give it some detail. Then I've also pressed in some little indents. And this bit here is going to be fitting a faux gemstone. And these will sit in between each of the peaks, top and bottom. But I don't want to have to cut all of these out, make them all the same shape and size, get them all looking exactly the same. So I've got this two part modeling compound, which I'm gonna make a mold from. I've got two blobs of the modeling compound, one of each color, which I need to mix together until it's completely evenly distributed. <laughs> until it's completely evenly distributed. And I wanna make sure that this is gonna make a big enough mold to fit this into nicely and have good enough walls that they're not going to distort when I push clay in. This is nice and easy to mix. And by mixing the two, you're starting a chemical reaction. And I'm just gonna quickly shape this. I want it to be deep enough that this is going to sit into. I want it to be fairly flat across the top. Press this little model into the mold, and when I'm happy, So that's now pressed into the mould and I'm going to let it sit just like that until it has gone off. I don't mind if my little model doesn't sit completely into the mould. I made it quite big, quite 3D, so it's going to just be a little bit flatter, which is probably actually going to work better for me. And I'm also going to be making some faux gemstones. I could have made a mould but there's such a specific smooth shape that actually it's a lot easier to buy a little mold. And I've worked out which ones I'm going to be using to make the shape. I need the 24 by 33, which is the second one. This one, the 13 by 18. And then we come back up a size here for the 23 by 17. So it's these three. And then I've got lots of different options for small stones that I can use to sit into the center of this piece. That feels like it's done. It happens really quickly. Okay, that's not bad. And if I wanted to have another go, I could. I've still got the original. Now we're going to make some faux gemstones and I've been having a little play around with the Fimo, this is ruby quartz in the effect range. It doesn't matter that we're mixing Fimo and Sculpey. I tend to bake at a lower temperature for longer with the Sculpey anyway. The Fimo is a little bit, a little bit lower temperature. 
I like to do lots of shorter bakes so that I can firm up what I'm doing and then I don't distort things as I am building on them. And straight out of the pack it will mix a bead that looks like this. It has some inclusions in it. There is a little bit of mica in it, so it does have a little bit of a shimmer. Rather nice. I'm trying to get a sort of ruby look. And rubies can have sort of translucent inclusions in them. And so I tried adding a little bit of translucent clay. And you do get a little bit more depth and interest. I'm not sure if <laughs> once these are, are on the crown and it's en masse, whether that's going to make any difference at all. It might actually just end up looking a bit naff. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I then tried the same. So the ruby quartz, a bit of translucent and adding some really fine glitter. Which, unfortunately, yeah, that kind of does look like glitter. And then I thought I would really beef up the translucentness and see what that did for me. But it kind of bleaches the red out too much and it doesn't look gemstony anymore. So we're not going to do that. I may do something in between these two. So this is the colour that I ended up with and you're going to notice that it is nothing like what I started with. What I actually decided to do was blend in some other colours. So we've got the ruby quartz there and then I blended some pomegranate and some of this really dark purple, which I've torn the label on, so I'm not quite sure what it is. I'll try and put a, a tag to it. I blended those two colours together, and then I created leaves of sheets of this, and then sheets of the blend, and then I also layered up some sheets of translucent. When I say sheets, that means that I've run it through a pasta maker, a, a polymer clay rolling machine. I don't use it for pasta as well. It's purely for my polymer clay. Then I've run that through my machine again and again, just sort of folding it, run it through, fold it, run it through, fold it. I'm not trying to blend it, so I wasn't making it thinner and thinner and thinner. I've just used this on the thickest setting. I just want to bond them and make sure that the clay is nice and pliable. So it's flexing. There's no dry crumbly bits apart from maybe around the edges, but that's fine. <laughs> Some moulds have got um, things on the back, more structure to help you when you're filling them, but yeah. This was a very inexpensive one. There you go, that's the first cabochon. I have a sheet of metal here that I use to bake on, so I'll just turn these out onto my little tray. So that was my biggest cabochon. I'm going to make a second one just in case.
but because I am just turning them straight out of the silicone mould, I'm not getting any fingerprints on them. Now I'm making six of, yeah, six plus a couple of spares of the medium size. Okay, so that's all the cabochons done for the main settings in the crown. That's all these large central stations. Now we're going to try out the little mould that I made. So I've conditioned some polymer clay and I'm just going to carefully squish it into my mould. I'm just going to take the same piece and repeat that process. Normally when you're working with polymer clay you would be worrying about dust and dirt and fingerprints and everything um, and trying to keep the clay as clean as possible. This crown's going to get painted so all those things don't really matter. I'm keeping an eye out for um, for fingerprints, but dust particles aren't aren't going to be an issue. If your clay is really warm and it just doesn't want to come out without squishing, you can pop the mold into the fridge for about five minutes, be more than enough. Yeah, that's pretty good. The cabochons are now out of the oven. They've had half an hour at 110 degrees and I love the color. I'm much happier with the color than I was with the red quartz straight out of the packet. I think that's a much more believable colour. And these decorative pieces are coming along really well too. The mould's working beautifully. I think what I'd like to do next is start marking up the crown for the positions of the different pieces and then actually start adhering these decorative bits because they're going to need to bake on the crown so that they're following the curve otherwise if I bake them and then try and stick them on they will be flats trying to stick to a curved surface and that's going to be really awkward. I've just grabbed some more polymer clay and I'm going to use my oval cutters to make some I guess decorative bits that the stones are going to sit on So I've rolled this out to my second thickest 
on my pasta machine. I'm gonna go and bake those. So those had like three minutes in the oven just to just barely firm them up so that when I sort of start to touch them, I'm not gonna be deforming them. Now I'm gonna use my extruding tool and I'm gonna place a little rod of polymer clay into the tool. So I'm gonna sit the die on the end of the clay and then I'm going to screw the cap on without getting it cross threaded and then we're just going to start to wind the screw back into the extruder and start to feel some resistance and we may start to hear it squeak and this is making us a ribbon of even the thick, even the wide clay. And we can keep going. right to the end or stop wherever we like. I'm going to be applying this strip to the lower edge of the crown just to neaten up that, that edge there. Overlap the two ends and cut. Then I can get rid of that bit and the piece underneath it got cut. And they will line up perfectly. And I can just gently smooth that. I'm just going to quickly check that it has stayed on the edge. Because that is, after all, the idea that it is disguising the edge. I also want it to create a flat that I can sit the decorative bits onto. just playing around with some different diameters that the extruder can do and I've grabbed one here which has got four little holes in it what I'm trying to make it is a nice even little bezel for this to sit into so I'm taking my piece of baked polymer clay my faux gemstone and I'm just applying some bacon bond onto the back and I'm going to apply that to that little tablet of clay and then run a little bead right the way round I just want to make sure that my gemstone is sitting 
vertically. So that its narrowest points line up with the top and bottom of the little tablet that it's sitting on and that it is sitting evenly side to side. So there we go, that's our first jewel for our crown. And that's the main central one. So don't be confused and think that this is a glue. It will only bond the pieces together once it is baked at the correct temperature. Plus, I mean, that's raw clay. <laughs> and this isn't particularly baked. The only bit that's completely baked is the faux gemstone. So my crown is back out of the oven. My band has baked on. And I've just placed my first stone. And I think what I'm going to have to do is place a couple, bake it a little bit, place the next couple, bake it a little bit, And then we can start to lay in these little decorative sections. One of our family members had the family tree done and my mother's side actually comes down through the Berlin line uh, so I've always had a very soft spot for the Berlins. I wanted to use a crown that hmm, represented that, that connection Records show that she was crowned wearing the St. Edward crown, which is the, the current crown, but there's very good chance that it has significantly changed since she was crowned in it. So what I decided to do was use the one that Natalie Dormer wore when she was crowned as Anne Boleyn in the television series The Tudors and this is not a copy this is influenced by <laughs> now I'm building up some detail on the biggest cabochon so I've put it on a backing and just like the others I've added a band of extruded clay and then on top of that I am just cutting little tiny circles from the same diameter extrusion and laying it along so it looks kind of like it's um it's been set not with claws but with a decorative bezel now i'm making some evenly sized balls of the ecru clay and i'm just using the bacon bond to stick them on that's adding extra levels of detail it's disguising any bits that aren't quite so smooth and it's it's just adding richness to the crown i've conditioned some fimo blue ice effect clay this is going to look a little bit like um blue lace agate something like that 
<laughs> like a blue version of rose quartz. And then I've also got some mother of pearl effect Fimo as well. Now I've just got a little bit of scrap translucent clay, which I've extruded. And I've doubled it over. And now I'm going to twist it together. This is going to make a decorative edge to the top of the crown. And it's going to help disguise where those pendant pieces that make the peaks meet the polymer clay crown. And I'm just making sure it's evenly twisted by supporting it with my fingers. If you just hold it at one end and keep twisting, it will over tighten in one area and be quite loose in other areas. Right, so I think that is now as much detail as I plan to put on in the polymer clay. It's all baked and now I'm going to go ahead and give it a base coat with a normal primer, just a household primer. I've put it in a little jar and added some water to it. I want it quite runny so that I don't just clog up all the detail I've put in. The primer is just going to give a key to the acrylic paint that I'm going to put on over the top. Here you can see I have used a gold acrylic on the inside of the band. It's this Liquitex Basics Acrylic in gold. It's actually a smashing colour. If you want something to look like gold leaf, this is brilliant. Two coats of that and it was just glowing. And now I'm adding it to all that detail on the outside of the crown. Look at that gold, that's two coats. It's really great, really opaque. And now you can see it looking significantly duller. That's because I'm antiquing it. So this is some watered down black acrylic and some burnt umber acrylic. And in some places it's a little bit more brown than in others and others it's just black. And then I'm taking a wet brush and just running it over the top and making it dribble down into all those nooks and crannies that I've made with the detail. Then I can take a dry piece of kitchen towel and just rub it off the top surfaces so it stays in all the nooks and crannies but you get a sort of a buffed look on the top surfaces. Now I'm cleaning the gemstones with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol or IPA. And I've just soaked a cotton bud in that. And I'm just carefully rubbing it over the stones. You're going to take off some of the paint, some of the gold and some of the antiquing. So just be prepared. You're going to have to come back in with a little detail brush to put that back in. Then I'm using a microfiber cloth to buff them clean. And you can see that there's a difference between ones which have been buffed and those that haven't. There's a definite sheen to the ones that have been done. Then I'm using some Windsor and Newton Galleria gloss varnish and I'm applying that just to the stones, just to those faux rubies and making sure there aren't any air bubbles. I actually give it two coats of this. Then I've got some E6000 plus glue and I'm applying it to the back of the little blue ice and mother of pearl cabochons.
we're going to end up with four of the blue ice ones around that big central cabochon and then it will go mother of pearl blue ice mother of pearl blue ice until we get right back around to the front that takes a little while to fully cure so just be careful while you're handling the crown Now I've got some 0.4mm gold plated copper wire and I'm putting it onto, these are shell pearl, that's the nacre of pearl that has been reformed into perfect, perfect shapes, perfect rounds. Pearls of this size in perfect rounds would be incredibly expensive but these give us the look that I want. And I'm just using a really simple wrapping technique to make the pearls attach to the crown and I'm using the handy little spaces on the pendant pieces that make the peaks to secure the pearls too. I can use them as a wrapping point. And then I'm just passing the tails of the wire round and round and round to really secure them. You have to be a bit careful, 0.4 wire isn't super strong and if you over bend it or keep trying to sort of backwards and forwards work it, you will work hard on it and it will snap. Here I'm just passing it back through the very peak of the pendant piece just to give me an extra anchor point. And then I'm just smoothing down the edges. So there's my crown all finished. It's been a mission. <laughs> I'm really pleased with it though. I think, I think it looks like something quite ancient. <laughs> yeah. The one thing I will have to do is definitely make a kind of comfort band that's going to help it sit up a little bit and take the pressure off my forehead and then when I actually go to the parade I'm going to have to have done my hair a bit bigger so that it kind of, yeah, looks a bit more dramatic and in keeping. Otherwise with kind of everyday hair it looks a bit wah. Right, that's it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, share and subscribe to me here on YouTube. And until next time, off with their heads. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>